Following its recent tradition of starting outside Italy every other year, this year's Giro d'Italia's Grande Partenza, or Big Start, will take place in Ireland from the 9th to the 11th of May and involves routes in Belfast, around the stunning Causeway coast and Armagh, before finishing in Dublin. It's something that the organisers are very excited about. This country is very important for us and um, the choice to start in Ireland, in Northern Ireland, I think it's uh, very important for, for, uh, for Giro d'Italia also to increase the visibility around the world and a, a big opportunity not only from a sport point of view but also from a social and political point of view to, to, to be here this year. It's a very good opportunity to see a fantastic land and a difficult uh, competition because it's not so easy and uh, as I told you before we are starting very, very well in, in a very tough way. Stage 1 and 2 are set to start and finish in Northern Ireland. Stage 1, a relatively flat 21.7 kilometre team time trial around Belfast city centre. A very demanding, tight and technical route. The teams will have to work hard to negotiate the course. Stage 2 is one for the sprinters. Again, a relatively flat stage. This 218 kilometre leg of the race starts in Belfast, taking in the Causeway coastal route before returning to Belfast. Believe me, I'm really very impressed. And I think that uh, the images that we transmit uh, all over the world uh, for the Grande Partenza will touch uh, so many people that will be uh, interested to visit the country. And I think the, the, the path and, and the course will be very interesting also from a sporting point of view. Following recent starts in Greece, France, the Netherlands and Denmark, Ireland is the latest nation to host the Giro departure. And stage three sees the race move between Armagh in Northern Ireland to Dublin in the Republic. 187 kilometres, the first half crossing the hills around Armagh before two fourth category climbs and then an intermediate sprint in Balbriggan after the border crossing. The road winds along the coastline and into the finish in the centre of Dublin. Birthplace of the Giro's only Irish victor, Stephen Roche, the champion in 1987. The race then makes the 2,200 kilometre transition to Bari in southern Italy. It's a long race, uh, takes uh, 23 days, so I mean, uh, it's, uh, everything can happen. Of course, so we start very tough uh, since the beginning, and then we move uh, our caravana from, uh, from Highland to, to Italy, and uh, I think it's uh, the best way to start uh, Giro d'Italia in 2014. Nobody would have bet on it a couple of years ago, and um, you know, fair play to the Northern Ireland Tourist Board and Fort Ireland. And of course, Dara McQuaid, uh, Shadri Sports, uh, um, having the idea, having the vision. When you see the, the fighting spirit behind uh, all these people that went across to Italy, pitched to RCS, um, telling them why the Giro was good to come to, uh, to Belfast and to Ireland, I think it's, um, it goes, it's embraced very well by the Giro and it'll be embraced very well by the Irish people because it's, um, we are both the same kind of profile, you know, it's uh, people that believed in it um, really pushed very, very hard and got it and, you know, I'm delighted now to be part of it as, a, as like the Giro ambassador for the Northern Ireland Tourist Board. One of the big names missing this year is 2013 champion Vincenzo Nibali, but organisers believe it won't subtract from the scale and drama to come in the 2014 edition. Last year he won uh, an incredible Giro d'Italia uh, under incredible pressure and uh, incredible climatic, climatic situation. It's, uh, we lost, uh, for sure, a great champion and a great protagonist, but I think that um, Giro d'Italia belongs to the athletes, and belongs to the history, so I'm quite sure that uh, we will succeed also this year and we will discover maybe new champions and new athletes that can uh, fight uh, for pink. 
With the Grande Potenza set to start on Friday the 9th of May, all eyes will be focused on the Emerald Isle to see who will leave these shores with the pink leader's jersey on their shoulders.